Welcome to the next video in the PyTorch training series. This video gives an overview of Captum, PyTorch's toolset for model interpretability. In this video, we'll discuss the basic concepts of Captum that we'll be covering, attributions, attribution algorithms, and visualizations. We'll demonstrate how to perform and visualize feature attributions for a computer vision classifier. We'll apply layer attribution to the same classifier to examine the activity of a model's hidden layers. And finally, we'll look at Captum Insights, an API for creating visualization widgets for images, text, and other features. Captum provides a deep set of tools for explaining the behavior of your PyTorch models. This video and the accompanying interactive notebook provide only an overview of core features. The website at Captum AI contains more in-depth tutorials, documentation, and an API reference. To run the interactive notebook associated with this video, you'll want to install Python version 3.6 or higher, Flask 1.1 or higher, and the latest versions of PyTorch, TorchVision, and Captain. Captain can be easily installed with PIP or with Anaconda by specifying the PyTorch channel. To start with, we're going to take a pre-trained image classifier, ResNet trained against the ImageNet dataset, and we're going to use the tools within Captum to gain insight into how the model responds to a particular input image to give its prediction. This first cell is a bunch of imports, including attribution methods and visualization tools from Captum, which we'll examine shortly. Next, we'll get our pre-trained model. Then we'll pull up an image to work with. Wherever you got this video in the interactive notebook should also include a folder of images for use in this tutorial. In our case, it's going to be a cat. Next, we'll define some image transforms to prepare the image for consumption by the model and bring in the human readable labels of the thousand ImageNet classes. Now, let's see what the model thinks this is. And it thinks our cat is a cat. But why does the model think this is a picture of a cat? For the answer to that, we can look under the hood of the model with Captum. The core abstraction in Captum is the attribution that is, a quantitative method of attributing a particular output or activity of a model with its input. The first kind of attribution is feature attribution. This lets us ask which parts of the input were most important in determining a model's prediction. It lets us find answers to questions like, which words in this input question were most significant in deciding the answer? Which pixels in this input image drove the model's classification of the image? Which features of the input data were most significant to my regression model's prediction? Feature attribution just covers inputs and outputs, though. What if we want to see what's happening inside the model? For that, we have layer attribution. This attributes the activity of a hidden layer of a model to the model's input. It lets us answer questions like, which neurons in this layer were most active given this input? Which neurons in this layer were most important to how the input influenced a particular output neuron? How is the activation map output by this convolutional layer correlated to my input image? Finally, there's neuron attribution. This is similar to layer attribution, but goes down to the level of individual neurons in the model. In this tutorial, we're going to look at feature attribution and layer attribution. First, feature attribution. Attributions are realized by an attribution algorithm, a particular method of mapping model activity to inputs. The first feature attribution algorithm we'll look at is called integrated gradients. This algorithm numerically approximates the integral of the gradients of the model's output with respect to its input, essentially finding the most important paths through the model for a given input-output pair. We'll go ahead and create an integrated gradients object, initializing it with our model. Then we'll call the attribute method on it. We'll feed it our input, our output label, and an optional number of steps to run. Note that running this cell can take a couple of minutes. The process of integrating the gradients is computationally intensive. Once that cell finishes running, we have a sort of numerical importance map of the cat image with respect to the cat label generated by the model. For a simple regression model with few output categories, we might just print that out as a table, 
But for a more complicated CV model with a large input like an image, it would help to be able to relate the importance map to the image visually. Captain's got you covered. The visualization module gives you tools for exactly that. Here, we're going to make two calls to visualize image adder. The first displays the original image. First, we need to make some adjustments to the image. We call squeeze to remove the batch dimension on the image. Uh, we make sure we're running on CPU. We detach the image tensor from computation history, otherwise the image tensor will keep tracking its computation history unnecessarily. And finally, we make it a NumPy array and switch the dimensions around to put the color channels last. The first argument of this method would normally be the attributions, but for this call, we're going to make that none. We're just displaying the original image. The second argument is our transformed image. The third argument is a visualization method, the string that indicates how you want the visualization to work. Here, we told Captain we just want to display the original image. Finally, we give our visualization an instructive title. The second call will make a visual mapping of the important regions of our image. The first argument is the attributions we got from integrated gradients, and the second is our transformed image. For a method, we'll specify heat map, where color intensity maps to the importance of an image region. Captain allows you to use custom color maps from Matplotlib, and we've made one here that will slightly enhance the contrast of our heat map. We specify sign as positive. We're only looking at positive attributions. Running the cell, we can see that the model is paying attention to the outline of the cat as well as the region around the center of the cat's face. Let's try another feature attribution algorithm. Next, we'll try occlusion. Integrated gradients was a gradient-based attribution algorithm. Occlusion is different. It's a perturbation-based method that involves screening out portions of the image and seeing how that affects the output. As before, we're going to specify our input image and our output label to the attribution algorithm. For occlusion, we're going to specify a few more items. The first are the sliding window and the stride length, and these are analogous to similar configuration options in a convolutional neural network. We're also going to set our baseline that is, our representation of an occluded image cell, is zero. Depending on how your data are normalized, you may wish to specify a different baseline, but for zero-centered data, it makes sense to use zero. We'll run the attribute call and give it a minute. And in the next cell, we're doing something new. We're calling visualize image adder multiple. To show multiple visualizations of the occlusion attribution, Besides the original image, we'll show three visualizations. The first two are heat maps with both positive and negative attributions. Uh, you can see that we're providing a list of methods with heat map being the second and third. We're also specifying a sign for each visualization. And here you can see that we've asked for positive attributions on one heat map and negative on the other. These indicate which. For our final visualization, we'll use the mask method. This uses positive attributions to selectively screen the original image, giving a striking visual representation of the areas of the image the model paid most attention to for this input-output pair. Running the cell, you can see that this maps well to what we learned from integrated gradients. Most of the activity is around the cat's outline and the center of its face. What about what the model is doing under the hood? Let's use a layer attribution algorithm to check the activity of one of the hidden layers. GradCam is another gradient-based attribution algorithm designed for ComNets. It computes the gradients of the output with respect to the specified model layer, averages the gradients for each channel, and multiplies this average by the layer activations, and uses this as a measure of the importance of the layer's output. To get started with layer attribution, we'll create a layer GradCam object and initialize it with our model and the layer we wish to examine. Then we'll give it the input-output pair and ask it to do attribution. We can visualize this with a heat map as we did before. In this way, you can visually examine which areas of the ConfNet's activation map relate to your output. We can do better than this, though. Since the output of a convolutional layer is usually spatially correlated to the input, we can take advantage of that by upsampling that activation map and comparing it directly with the input. The layer attribution parent class has a convenience method for upsampling the lower resolution ConvNet activation map up to the input size. 
we'll do that with the interpolate method here and ask the visualizer for a blended heat map showing the original image with a heat map superimposed and a masked image. Visualizations like this can give you insight into how hidden layers contribute to a particular output from your model. Captain comes with an advanced visualization tool called Captain Insights, which lets you put together multiple visualizations in an in-browser widget that lets you configure the attribution algorithm and its parameters. Captain Insights lets you visualize text, image, and arbitrary data. We're going to try three images now, the cat, the teapot, and a trilobite fossil. Again, these images should be available wherever you got the interactive notebook that goes with this video. First, we'll query the model to see what it thinks each of these are, and it seems to be doing okay. Now, let's set up Captain Insights. We're going to use the Attribution Visualizer object, and we'll configure it with our model, a scoring function for the model's outputs, here, softmax, a list of the classes the model recognizes. Here I'm stripping out an ordered list of the ImageNet class names. We'll tell it that we're looking at image features. Captain Insights also handles text and arbitrary data as well. And we'll give it a data set, which is just an iterable that returns a batch of images and labels. Note that we haven't specified an algorithm or a visualization method. These are things that you set up in the in-browser widget. Now we ask the visualizer to render. It starts off empty, but we can set up configuration parameters and ask it to fetch our visualized attributions with the Fetch button. I'm going to leave things at the default setting for integrated gradients. Captain needs a few minutes to generate the attributions. But now we can see that it ranks the first few predictions for each image with their probabilities and provides heat map attribution for the important regions of the image. In this way, Captain Insights lets you experiment with attribution methods and understand the activity that led to your model's predictions, both correct and incorrect, and lets you do it visually with minimal code. Finally, don't forget to look at Captain.ai for documentation, tutorials, an API reference, and access to the source on GitHub.